Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you can be notified about the upcoming videos. You can join the Telegram group as well. The link is in the description below. In this very group, you will get the access to free PDFs of these sessions. So let's not waste any time and move on to question number one now. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman recently announced the Asset Monetization Plan, which involves a pipeline of asset the government is looking to monetize. You have to identify the statements correctly related in this regard. So let's first discuss about this Asset Monetization Plan and then we'll come back to our question. So in numerous sessions, I have discussed what is asset monetization. Let me discuss it in brief once again. Asset monetization is basically an alternative to disinvest. When you don't want as a government to give away the ownership of your asset, but still you want to utilize those assets which are lying idle, which are not generating value for you to generate the value for you, then you can go for asset monetization. So it's the process wherein you can convert uh, the assets into economic value. So the, there are assets which are underutilized or unutilized. Okay, you can utilize those resources, create new sources of revenue for, from them. So what can be done? The government can offer the private entities to bid for those assets and utilize them for creation of productive assets. So you don't have assets ki ownership here. De you don't have to sell assets. You don't have to disinvest. What are you doing? You don't have to sell your assets. You अपने एसेट को एक तरह से लीज पे रेंट पे दे रहे हो प्राइवेट एंटिटीज को सो वो बिडिंग करेंगी उस बेसिस पे उनको वो एसेट्स अलॉट होंगे कुछ इयर्स के लिए वो उन एसेट्स को यूज करेंगे और आपको गवर्नमेंट को वो कुछ रेवेन्यू पे करेंगे उसके लिए कुछ अमाउंट गवर्नमेंट को मिलता रहेगा तो गवर्नमेंट के एसेट्स भी यूज हो गए जो आइडल पड़े थे और गवर्नमेंट को उससे कुछ रेवेन्यू भी अर्न हो जाएगा दिस इज एसेट मोनेटाइजेशन जहां पे आपको अपनी ओनरशिप नहीं गिव अप करनी पड़ती लेकिन आपके आइडल रिसोर्सेज यूज हो जाते हैं अब गवर्नमेंट के पास कितने ऐसे रोडवेज हैं रेलवेज हैं इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं जो आइडल पड़े हैं गवर्नमेंट के लिए कुछ वैल्यू जनरेट नहीं कर रहे गवर्नमेंट ने वहां इन्वेस्ट तो कर दिया लेकिन अब वो एसेट्स वेस्ट है इसलिए उनको यूटिलाइज करने का ये एक तरीका है एसेट मोनेटाइजेशन सो रिसेंटली द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर हैज अनाउंस्ड द न्यू एसेट मोनेटाइजेशन प्लान वेयर द गवर्नमेंट इज प्लानिंग टू गो फॉर अ पाइपलाइन ऑफ एसेट मोनेटाइजेशन मतलब कई एसेट्स होंगे जिन्हें मोनेटाइज करने की यहां बात की जा रही है there would be numerous assets which are going to be uh, monetized in this uh, asset monetization plan. So government aims to collect about 6 lakh crores by its plan uh, to fund its ambitious infrastructure projects over 4 years. So government ka manna hai ki in assets ko monetize karke wo aane wale 4 saalo mein 6 lakh crore tak ka amount generate kar sakti hai, revenue generate kar sakti hai aur usko infrastructure projects mein laga sakti hai. The ownership of all these assets will remain with the government and there would be mandatory handback of the assets after a time period. So government is not selling away these assets. This is a really very important point. This point is which is a disinvestment from this disinvestment. Here government अपने एसेट सेल नहीं कर रही है कुछ साल बाद जाके जब टाइम पीरियड जिसके लिए वो एसेट्स प्राइवेट एंटिटीज को ऑफर किए गए हैं उनको वो गवर्नमेंट को वापस करने पड़ेंगे गवर्नमेंट की इंटेंशन यहां सेल करना नहीं है उन एसेट्स से वैल्यू जनरेट करना है द नेशनल मोनेटाइजेशन पाइपलाइन कवर्स अराउंड 15 रेलवे स्टेडियम्स 25 एयरपोर्ट्स 160 कोल माइनिंग प्रोजेक्ट्स थ्री टॉप थ्री सेक्टर्स फॉर एसेट मोनेटाइजेशन आर रेलवे एयरपोर्ट्स एंड कोल माइंस ओके and by value the roads, railways and power. So kya kya assets hai jo government monetize kar rahi hai? Let's see the assets which government wants to monetize. There are airports, okay, roadways, power generation plants, coal mines, natural gas pipelines, telecom, warehousing assets, railway stations. So ye sare assets government monetize karna chaati hai. Inke through wo around 6 lakh crore tak ka amount generate karna chaati का सोच रही है इन आने वाले चार सालों में the, NF, the national monetization plan uh, pipeline does not include the land but will include the uh, brownfield project, project so ऐसे कोई projects जहाँ पे आपने already investment कर रखा है उनका monetization भी government कर सकती है so this is the plan of government 
नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट वाई दे वॉन्ट टू कम अप विद दिस असिट मोनिटाइजेशन प्लान जैसे कि हम इतनी बार डिस्कस कर चुके हैं डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट के एडवांटेजेस तो सिमिलर रीजन्स हैं इस प्लान के भी Uh, we have some similar reasons or objectives like that of this investment to go for this asset monetization like the resources are lying idle so they can get utilized okay so fun can reason can be resources can be better utilized then another reason can be that it can generate additional revenue from for the government from these resources which were otherwise lying idle then uh, when these new uh, uh, when all these thing will happen those projects will start running then it, the employment will be generated all this will ensure uh, the money which will government will earn from there it can invest in different projects different infrastructure related activities all this will ensure the economic growth so sab cheeze interlinked hai ye kuch major reasons hai is plan ke so same has been written over here that the money which will be generated can be put in into various other infrastructure projects it can tap the private sector for new infrastructure creation create uh, employment ensure economic growth when government will earn this revenue it can launch more investment projects in roadways power and all okay and when you are involving the private sector in this then it will give a push to digitization and innovation jab un resources ko private players use karenge jo technology mein bahut efficient hai jo creativity ke sath kuch na kuch naya karte rehte hain so wo digitization innovation ko bhi promote karenge so ye major reasons hai government is asset monetization plan ke sath kyun aana chahti hai all right now if i move back to the question we have to identify the correct statements फर्स्ट इज करेक्ट कि छः लाख करोड़ तक का अमाउंट जनरेट करने का एम कर रही है गवर्नमेंट थर्ड इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट कि क्या इसके ऑब्जेक्टिव रहेंगे सेकेंड इज इन करेक्ट बिकॉज इट सेज ओनरशिप विल बी गिवन टू प्राइवेट प्लेयर्स नो ओनरशिप विल रिमेन विद दी गवर्नमेंट सो फर्स्ट एंड थर्ड स्टेटमेंट आर करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर टू नाउ इट सेज पीयर टू पीयर लेंडिंग इज अस्टम थ्रू विच पीपल कैन डायरेक्टली बोरो मनी फ्रॉम ईच अदर P2P platforms carry out some basic background and credit checks on the borrowers and lenders to choose which borrowers to lend money to. RBI came out with P2P directions for this platform. You have to identify which of the following is incorrect. Now these directions which they are talking about are not new directions okay these directions came up i believe in the year 2017 uh, so they are asking that which of these directions is clear is correct basically or they are asking which of these is incorrect so you must know what are the correct directions first so our basic objective of answering this question is to know about the peer to peer lending platforms and what rbi has to say about them so let's discuss very briefly what are these p2p lending platforms fintech firms like cred and bharat pay have recently come up with peer to peer lending offerings ab aapne kai newspaper mein padha hoga ki ye companies ne peer to peer lending offering ki hai to aapko yahan se ek word pick up karna hai peer to peer lending to aapko dekhna hai ki ye peer to peer lending kya hoti hai aapko iske bare mein sab pata hai ki nahi nahi pata to aapko uske bare mein search karna chahiye aise hi aap newspapers padhne chahiye kuch bhi padho koi naya topic aapko lage kya aapko uske bare mein pata hai अगर पता है तो आर बी आई या से की उससे रिलेटेड क्या डायरेक्शन है ये सब ये आपकी अप्रोच होनी चाहिए न्यूज पेपर पढ़ते हुए जब आप आर बी आई से बी जैसे एग्जाम्स के लिए प्रिपेयर कर रहे हो सो इफ आई कम इनकाउंटर दिस टर्म पीयर टू पीयर लेंडिंग लेट्स डिस्कस वॉट इज इट एंड वॉट आर आर बी आई रेगुलेशन रिगार्डिंग दिस सो इट्स सिस्टम थ्रू विच पीपल कैन डायरेक्टली बोरो फ्रॉम ईच अदर सो इफ आई वॉन्ट टू बोरो सम मनी फ्रॉम यू इफ देर इज अ पीयर टू पीयर लेंडिंग प्लेटफॉर्म दैट so we need a basically a system which allows that lending and borrowing so peer to peer lending platform is that system which allows you and me to borrow money from each other these platforms carry out some basic background and credit check on the borrowers and allows lender to choose which borrowers they want to lend to so is platform mein aap alag alag risk category mein borrowers ko baant sakte ho aur lender decide kar sakta hai ki wo inme se kis type ke borrower ko lend karna chahta hai so lender borrower aapas mein lend borrow easily kar sakte hain is process mein these loans are mostly unsecured uh, offered at high rates and high risk so ye loans unsecured hote hain isme aapko zyada kuch security dene ki zarurat nahi hai zyada collateral wagera offer karne ki zarurat nahi hai aisa kyu offer kiya jata hai because these loans are basically of very less uh, tenure and very less in amount that's why not that much uh, that much requirement is there 
to provide the to secure these loans and that's also the reason why there are uh, high rates which are being charged so that lenders can earn better because they are offering you the facility of uh, they are offering you the facility of the unsecured loans so if i talk about what are the basic categories uh, for which these loans are taken so top 5 loan purposes are medical emergency taking the advance for the salary family function home renovation and education now giving you some examples of the p2p lending platforms lendbox fairsend lending card finzi i lend these are all your p2p lending platforms jisme borrowers or lenders aapas mein easily lend borrow kar sakte hain ये लोन शॉर्ट टर्म के लेस अमाउंट के होते हैं और अनसिक्योर्ड होते हैं नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द आरबीआई रेगुलेशंस इन दिस रिगार्ड आरबीआई केम अप विद दीज डायरेक्शंस इन 2017 सो पी टू पी प्लेटफॉर्म नीड टू रजिस्टर विद आरबीआई व्हिच पी टू पी प्लेटफॉर्म कैन रजिस्टर द वंस हुज नेटवर्थ इज एटलीस्ट टू करोड़ जिनकी दो करोड़ एटलीस्ट नेटवर्थ है वही पी टू पी लेंडिंग प्लेटफॉर्म की तरह ऑपरेट कर सकते हैं आर से लाइसेंस ऑप्टेन करने के बाद इन्वेस्टर्स के नॉट लैंड मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड टू अ सिंगल बोरोअर इस प्लेटफॉर्म में अगर लेंडर्स हैं ओके अगर एक बोरोअर है वो बोरो करना चाहता है तो एक लेंडर उसको पचास हजार से ज्यादा का अमाउंट नहीं दे सकता ठीक है बट दैट बोरोअर कैन बोरो फ्रॉम अदर लेंडर एज वेल लाइक ही बोरो बट देयर इज अ कैप ऑन दी बोरोअर एज वेल सो अ सिंगल बोरोअर के नॉट बोरो मोर देन टेन लैख अब ये बोरोअर अलग अलग लेंडर से तो पैसा ले सकता है लेकिन टोटल मिला के दस लाख से ज्यादा का अमाउंट ये भी नहीं ले सकता ओके तो इस पर भी ये कैप है देन द लेंडर और दी इन्वेस्टर इन अ पी टू पी प्लेटफॉर्म के नॉट लैंड मोर देन फिफ्टी लैक अक्रॉस ऑल सच प्लेटफॉर्म सो वो जो ये पी टू पी प्लेटफॉर्म में लैंड कर रहा है वो 50 लाख से ज्यादा तक का लैंडिंग नहीं कर सकता लेंडर ओके पूरे प्लेटफॉर्म में यहाँ था सिंगल बोरोअर को 50,000 से ज्यादा नहीं ओवरऑल 50 लाख लिमिट है इफ एन इन्वेस्टर लैंड्स मोर देन 10 लाख देन दे नीड टू सबमिट अ नेटवर्क सर्टिफिकेट टू द चार्ट फ्रॉम द चार्ट अकाउंटेंट टू द पी टू पी प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी लैख सो अगर कोई ऐसा इन्वेस्टर है जो दस लाख से ज्यादा का अमाउंट लैंड करना चाहता है तो वो कर सकता है लेकिन उसको एक उसकी नेटवर्थ एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी लाख है उसका सर्टिफिकेट चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट से बनवा के इस पी टू पी प्लेटफॉर्म को सबमिट करना होगा ये सब लिमिट्स क्यों इम्पोज की गई हैं ऑल दीज लिमिट्स हैव बीन इम्पोज विद अ सर्टेन रीजन सो द रीजन इज टू डाइवर्सिफाई दी रिस्क ऑफ द इन्वेस्टर्स अनदर इम्पोर्टेंट डायरेक्शन इज दैट द मेच्योरिटी ऑफ दीज लोन कैन नॉट एक्सीड थर्टी सिक्स मंथ्स तो थर्टी सिक्स मंथ्स तक के ही ये लोन्स दिए जा सकते हैं सो so, इससे हमें आइडिया लगा कि देर इज अ लिमिट ऑन द अमाउंट देर इज अ लिमिट ऑन द टाइम पीरियड फॉर विच दीज लोन कैन बी गिवन टॉकिंग अबाउट द रिकवरी मैकेनिज्म एंड द रिटर्न विच यू कैन अर्न ऑन दिस सो सी पी टू पी प्लेटफॉर्म आर अनसिक्योर्ड द डिफॉल्ट रेट्स डिफर सो द रिकवरी पॉलिसीज ऑल्सो डिफर एक कोई प्लेटफॉर्म हो सकता है जिसकी हो सकता है एन पी एस कम हो विजी दी अदर प्लेटफॉर्म सो इस रीजन से दोनों की रिकवरी मेथड्स भी डिफर करते हैं सो यूजल रिकवरी मेथड्स आर टेलीकॉलिंग फॉलो अप ओवर मेल्स कॉल्स पर्सनल विजिट आप उनको कॉल करके उनसे कम्युनिकेट करके मेल्स के थ्रू मैसेजेस के थ्रू उनसे पर्सनली विजिट करके पैसा रिकवर कर सकते हो अगर तब भी रिकवर नहीं हो पाता still the amount doesn't get recovered the amount is large so then you have the option to go for a legal action against that person then coming to returns uh, see uh, giving you an example of a p2p platform lend and club its returns were 22.4 and 4.5 was a default rate so on an average we can say that 12 to 25% are the returns which you can earn on these loans given ab inme se kuch deduction hota hai डिफॉल्ट रेट का या जो भी फीस वगैरह पे करनी है यूजली ट्वेल्व टू ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट के बीच रेट्स रेंज करते हैं और राइट सो दिस वॉज अबाउट द पी टू पी लेंडिंग प्लेटफॉर्म कमिंग बैक टू आर क्वेश्चन आइडेंटिफाइंग द इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट अ सिंगल बोरोअर के नॉट बोरो मोर देन फिफ्टी लैक इट इज रॉन्ग बिकॉज वी जस्ट रेड दैट सिंगल बोरोअर के नॉट बोरो मोर देन टेन लैक दैट्स वाई दिस ऑप्शन बी इज इन करेक्ट रिमेनिंग आर करेक्ट यू कैन जस्ट रीड दैम वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड coming to question number 3 the last question of the day which says identify the statements correctly related to the remission of duties and taxes on exported products rod tap scheme so let's first discuss about this rod tap scheme and then we'll come back to the question 
so it's a wto compliant export incentive scheme so let's see how it's an export incentive scheme this scheme reimburses the central state local taxes that are not refunded under other scheme to the exporters so in order to give an incentive to the exporters to export more the government uh, offers this option that whatever taxes they have paid some of those taxes will be refunded to them so that means you have to pay less tax as an exporter if you are getting this incentive obviously you would like to export more so in order to promote the exports this benefit is offered by the government under this very scheme this scheme came into effect from 1st january but since uh, the guidelines and rates for the export items were not announced. Exporters were not able to benefit from it. This scheme has come from January, but how will you get a refund? What will the rates be? The incentives will not be announced. That is why the exporters were not able to benefit from the exporters. Benefit nahi utha pa rahe the. Commerce Ministry has now notified these rates. So, on 17 August, these rates have been notified. The scheme with a budget of 12,454 crores will be available for export items in sectors like machine, agriculture, leather, gems, jewelry, automobiles, plastics, electricals, machinery. So, these are some sectors. There are many export items that will be incentive. The government has announced a separate scheme for the garment related exports, and that is the rebate of state and central levies and taxes scheme. Now, talking about why government has introduced this scheme. See, earlier we had a scheme called MEIS. And that's the scheme which this RODTEP has replaced. So, if I talk about the MEIS, which stands for the Merchandise Exports from India scheme, it was also export incentive scheme. Similarly, for exports, it was also offering the incentives. Okay, how the incentives were given in the form of duty credit scripts. So, scripts used to be issued and the exporters could use these scripts to pay the duties on the import of import, safety duty, anti-dumping duty. So, ek tarah se ye script issue kar di jati thi, jisko aap uh, duties pay karne ke liye use kar sakte the. Aapko alag se paisa pay nahi karna pada, to ek tarah se government ki taraf se aapko wo paisa aa raha hai government ko hi pay karne ke liye. But what was the problem with this scheme? This, this scheme was not as per WTO norms. What WTO norms said? That uh, the country which has a per capita income above 1000 US dollar, it cannot offer export subsidies like MEIS. That's the reason why this scheme needed to be replaced because India crossed this per capita limit. So India lost the case to WTO and come up with, it had to come up with a new scheme which was complying with that. And then it came with the RODEP, the TEP scheme. Now, talking about how this scheme is going to work, so it will refund the exporters the taxes that have not been repeated, refunded, placing Indian exports at a disadvantage. So, if there are any taxes that you have not refunded in any other scheme, then you can refund it in RODTEP. And it's important to note that the rebate will be under the scheme will not be available to those who have already taken these exemptions elsewhere okay then rebates will be issued in the form of duties credit electronic scripts which can be maintained by the in a ledger by central board of taxes and customs and the refund will be paid to the exporters and they can use it to pay the duties and all okay and these credits can be transferred so yeah these scripts issue kiya jayenge just a similar purpose ke liye use kiya jayega Talking about the rates, now we have rates mentioned kar diye gaye hai. So, refund range will uh, lie between 0.5 to 4.3% for different sectors. So, for textiles, it's 0.5 to 4.3. For food, it's 0.5 to 2.5. For plastics and rubber, till 2.4. And all these are the ranges, okay. Now, talking about the significance and the concerns associated with ROD tab. Obviously, it's going to enhance the India's competitiveness. It's going to reimburse the taxes. So, the uh, exporters will be interested to export more. Okay. It will ensure more trade flows, more export. Also, it will ensure the automated tax assessment. But what is, what's the problem? The rates are lower vis-a-vis -vis the MEIS scheme. Okay. It offered better rates. So, low budget or and also low budget has been allocated for this. So, ones who come first will be offered the benefit and ones who come later, once this budget has exhausted, they won't be able to get the benefit. So, low budget allocation means rebates can be 
exhausted on first come first served basis also this scheme does not apply to all sectors so it deprives the large sectors like steel pharma and this is going to have a negative impact on the exporters who used to export these kinds of products okay so this was all about this scheme coming back to our question we have to identify the correct state statements first is correct Okay, that uh, if you the reimburse central the scheme reimburses central state local taxes not refunded and the other scheme, and the third is also correct that refund of taxes by exporters will be credited to the ledger account with customs and can be used to pay custom duty. Second is incorrect because it has not replaced SEIA scheme rather the merchandise export from India scheme MEIA. So first and third are correct. That's why answer is option D. This was all for today's session. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.